Today we're taking a look at problem 1.4 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, 3rd edition. The problem states that there's a particle represented by a wave function, psi of x comma 0, given by this piecewise function here on the screen. Uh, we go from 0 to b for this function. Outside of that range, the wave function is equal to 0, as we can see uh, right here. So outside of the range, wave function is 0. Part A asks us to normalize the wave function. So to do that, we just go to our well-known equation where we say that if we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, psi of x comma zero squared dx and set that equal to zero, we can find the normalization constant A in terms of all the other constants in the problem. So that's what we're doing. Um, thus, from this equation, we can actually split it into four different integrals. We're going to go from negative infinity to zero of psi, and rather than write psi of x zero, I'm going to just shorthand this real quick, psi squared dx plus integral from zero to a, psi squared dx plus integral from a to b, psi squared dx plus integral from b to infinity psi squared dx and that equals one now if we remember here from our piecewise function the wave function is zero uh, from negative infinity to zero and also it equals zero from b to infinity therefore this first integral equals zero and this final integral equals zero so Already we've reduced four integrals down to two integrals just by looking at the problem there. And now we have integral zero to a, and now let's actually plug in what psi of x zero is. So from zero to a, we're given that the wave function equals a times x over lowercase a. Now let's also square that. So a squared, and then we have uh, excuse me, x squared over lowercase a squared dx plus integral from a to b and the wave function here is given by this uppercase a times b minus x over b minus a. Now let's also square that a squared b minus x squared b minus a squared dx equals 1. You notice that here where we had a squared and here we have b minus a squared as well as these uppercase a squareds in both terms, those are all constants so we can just bring them out front and actually as we do so both integrals essentially become the same integral just very very slightly different and what we end up having is a squared over this lowercase a squared x cubed over 3 evaluated 0 to a and then we also have well let's just finish solving this real quick that just equals let's see a over 3 times that uppercase a squared and then for this one for the second integral we have a squared over b minus a squared integral a to b b minus x squared dx and so when we actually do that um, again it's very much the same integral we're just left with uh, b minus a over 3 times a squared all right so really the only difference there was that shift. And now if we actually add these together and set them equal to one, uh, that's how we can solve for a. So a squared um, times a cubed, or a over three plus b minus a over three equals one. Uh, essentially do the math, a equals square root of three over b. All right. From here, we can actually just write out our wave function again. So thus we have 
writing out our full wave function, psi of x comma zero is equal to and we have x over a for this one we have uh, b minus x over b minus a for that one uh, this one goes from 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to a then here we go a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b and 0 otherwise so that's how we normalize the wave function um, it's the exact same, same thing as up here, except the only difference now is that we have our uppercase a term known as the normalization constant. Okay, so part b, sketch, actually sketch out the wave function as a function of x. Okay, so rather than take the time right here to make the sketch, I will just copy paste uh, my sketch from earlier. Okay, so online, just graphing it out here, we see that the constants lowercase a and lowercase b actually kind of designate um, these special points on the graph just based on the behavior of the piecewise function. So that's no surprise there. But uh, it does kind of tell us how we can manipulate the graph a little bit um, and gives us kind of a greater understanding of the physical um, you know, what's physically happening here with this wave function. So part C, where is the particle most likely to be found at t equals zero? So now we get into actually interpreting the graph. So part C, where is the particle most likely to be found? Well, the Born interpretation says that psi of x zero squared gives the probability. So the second graph right here is related to the probability. And so the particle is most likely to be found at x equals a for t equals zero. That's just, that's the highest probability. So whereas up here, the y-axis on this top graph represents just the wave function, when we actually square the wave function, now the y-axis is representing a probability. Our highest probability corresponds to x equals a. So just to write that out real quick as a final answer, well, our at t equals zero, x most probable is equal to a. And that's it. Part d. What is the probability that, a, that the particle is found to the left of a? That's what we're solving for right here. And then we're going to check that result in the limiting cases, case one, b equals a, and case two, b equals two a. All right, so Scrolling back down here, again, Born interpretation, we have that the probability uh, here, we're gonna go integrating from negative infinity to a, so that's the left side of a of the square of the wave function. So again, negative infinity to, infinity to a, that's the left side of a, when we integrate this, uh, when we integrate the wave function squared with these limits, it's going to give us the probability. Okay. Now we can, we're actually going to split this up into two integrals because of our piecewise function. This is going to equal integral from negative infinity to zero, negative infinity to zero of psi of x zero squared dx plus integral from zero to a psi of x comma zero squared dx we know that this first one again is going to be zero because the wave function is zero outside of that range from zero to b and then the second integral uh, we can just do it quickly here um, we have integral from zero to a of square root of three over b times x minus a all of this squared dx well, that is just going to equal 3 over b um, times a squared, bringing out our constants up front. When we raise the power of x, we're going to get x cubed over 3, and that's evaluating 0 to a. Well, 3's cancel. a squared is going to cancel with uh, two of those powers. 
we're essentially going to get A over B. So that's our probability um, that we're going to find the particle to the left of A. So probability equals A over B. Now let's, gonna ch let's check those with the two cases and see what happens. So case one, we have B equals A. So when B equals A, the probability is equal to A over A, which is equal to 1. So there's a 100% chance when you set B equal to A that you're going to find the, pro the particle to the left of A. And es essentially what that means, you know, if B equals A, well, this part of the graph shifts all the way over here, and it's just going straight down. So we have this, I should draw this on the other graph, actually. Um, it's just going to go straight down. So yeah, of course, you know, the wave function is zero to the right of A. So of course there's zero probability that you're going to find it to the right, and there's a 100% probability that you're going to find it to the left uh, side of A. Now, if we go to case two and say, well, okay, now we have B equals 2A. Take probability equals A over 2A equals 1 half. So there's now a 50-50 chance that you're going to find it on the left or the right. And, you know, you can keep going and solve for other probabilities like this, but it just asks for those two cases. Now, part E. Part E asks us, what is the expectation value of X? So for expectation value of X, this is not the same question as part C. This is not the most probable value. Um, this is expectation value, so there is a different definition. To solve for expectation value, we're going to plug it into the formula here. The expectation value of x is going to be equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity, so over all x of x times psi of x comma 0 squared dx. If it had asked us for expectation value of x squared, we would put an x squared there, but it didn't. It's just asking for the expectation value of x. And so with that equation in mind, we can plug it in. And now again, rather than write out four different integrals as I should to be fully thorough, I know that the outermost integrals are going to come to zero. They're going to equal zero because the wave function is zero for those um, outer limits of integration. Just a reminder, these limits are up here from negative infinity to zero, and then from b to infinity. So rather than write out those four, we're just going to write the two inner integrals. And so those equal integral from zero to a of x times square root of three over b, x over a, all of this squared dx, plus integral from a to b of x times square root of 3 over b, b minus x, b minus a, all of this squared dx. So set up that integral and solve, and I'm just going to kind of skip through this a little quickly here, and you can kind of check your work as you go um, to make sure the, the algebra lines up from step to step and that the calculus is done correctly. And essentially those are our constant terms. Bring them out front. You see that it's very much the same integral just with a shift. And we end up getting uh, after our integration these terms here. And essentially, as you continue to simplify, it comes out that expectation value of x is equal to b plus 2a all over 4. And that's your final answer. Now, what's interesting here, again, I mentioned that the expectation value of x is not the same as the most probable value of x um, at time t equals 0. So let's kind of consider that for a second. Let's let a equal 1 in several different cases here. 
Now let's say b equals 3, b equals 4, b equals 5, b equals 6. And we could keep going. But as we plug in, what's the expectation value for each of these? Well, the expectation value of b equals 3, well, it's 3 plus 2, so 5 over 4. Expectation value is 5 over 4. And this one, expectation value is going to be 6 over 4. And then you have 7 over 4 and 8 over 4. And so you see your expectation value is changing based on the B value, but the A value is always remaining the same. And so if the A value is always remaining the same, well, then your X most probable is still always going to equal A. So your most probable X value and your expectation value of X are different. And that's clearly seen if you just plug in for this expectation value formula we found right here.